Hello and welcome to our channel Bookish Bliss. I am Alicia and today we are going to talk about 7 Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief summary of each habit and how you can apply them to your own life. Before getting started if you are new to our channel please subscribe and if you find this video informative, like the video and share it with your friends. In this book, Covey outlines a framework for personal and professional success that has been used by millions of people around the world. The seven habits are designed to help you become more effective in your personal and professional life by teaching you how to think and act in ways that will lead to greater success and fulfillment. Throughout this video series, we will be discussing each of these habits in detail, explaining what they mean and how you can apply them to your own life. Whether you're looking to improve your personal relationships, achieve your goals, or become more successful in your career, the seven habits of highly effective people can help you get there. Let's get started. The first habit is be proactive. This means taking responsibility for your own actions and choices, rather than being passive and waiting for things to happen to you. By being proactive, you can take control of your life and achieve your goals. Being proactive means identifying the things that are important to you and taking the necessary actions to make them happen. It means actively seeking out opportunities and taking initiative, rather than waiting for things to come to you. It also means being responsible for your own actions, rather than blaming others or external circumstances for your failures. One way to be proactive is to set clear goals and develop a plan to achieve them. This means identifying what you want to accomplish, setting specific and measurable targets, and taking the necessary steps to reach them. By being proactive in this way, you'll be able to take control of your own life and move forward towards your desired outcomes. Another way to be proactive is to anticipate problems and take action to prevent them. This means being aware of potential roadblocks and taking steps to mitigate them before they occur. By being proactive in this way, you'll be able to minimize the negative impact of problems and stay on track towards your goals. The second habit is begin with the end in mind. This means setting clear goals and having a plan for achieving them. By setting clear goals, you'll have a clear direction and be able to stay on track. It encourages individuals to think about their ultimate goals and objectives and to develop a clear understanding of the steps they need to take to reach them. When you begin with the end in mind, you start with a clear picture of your desired outcome and you work backwards to create a plan that will take you there. This means setting specific and measurable goals and then developing a plan to achieve them. It also means considering the long-term implications of your actions and making sure that they align with your ultimate goals and objectives. One way to begin with the end in mind is to create a vision statement that clearly outlines your goals and objectives. A vision statement is a powerful tool that can help you stay focused and motivated as you work towards your goals. It should be specific, measurable, and aligned with your values and beliefs. Another way to begin with the end in mind is to create a personal mission statement. A mission statement is a statement of purpose that defines who you are and what you stand for. It should be a reflection of your values and beliefs, and it should guide your actions and decisions. By beginning with the end in mind, you'll be able to create a clear vision of your desired outcome and you'll be able to develop a plan that will take you there. This habit is key to achieving long-term success in personal and professional life. The third habit is put first things first. This means focusing on what's most important and not getting bogged down by less important tasks. By putting first things first, you'll be able to prioritize your time and energy on what's truly important. It encourages individuals to focus on the most important tasks and activities and to manage their time and energy in a way that supports their priorities. When you put first things first, you take the time to identify the most important tasks and activities that need to be done and you focus your time and energy on those tasks. This means setting specific and measurable goals and then creating a plan to achieve them. It also means being mindful of how you spend your time and making sure that your actions align with your goals and objectives. 
One way to put first things first is to use a time management tool, such as the Eisenhower matrix, to prioritize tasks. This matrix categorizes tasks into four quadrants based on their urgency and importance. By using this tool, you can identify which tasks are most important and need to be done first. Another way to put first things first is to set specific and measurable goals, and then break them down into smaller, manageable tasks. This means creating a plan of action, and then taking the necessary steps to achieve your goals. By putting first things first, you'll be able to manage your time and energy in a way that supports your priorities. This habit is key to achieving long-term success in personal and professional life, and it's essential for staying focused and motivated. The fourth habit is think win-win. This means thinking in terms of mutual benefit rather than only looking out for yourself. By thinking win-win, you'll be able to create mutually beneficial situations and build strong relationships. It encourages individuals to think in terms of mutual benefit and cooperation, rather than competition or self-interest. When you think win-win, you focus on finding solutions that benefit everyone involved, rather than just one person. This means looking for opportunities to collaborate, to create value for others, and to build mutually beneficial relationships. It also means being open to different perspectives and willing to consider the needs and wants of others. One way to think win-win is to practice empathetic listening. This means actively listening to others and trying to understand their perspectives, even if you disagree with them. By doing this, you'll be able to build trust and create a more collaborative environment. Another way to think win-win is to practice abundance mentality. This means believing that there is enough to go around and that success is not a zero-sum game. By adopting this mindset, you'll be more open to collaboration and less likely to see others as competitors. Thinking win-win is important in both personal and professional life, it's essential for building strong relationships, creating a positive work environment, and for resolving conflicts. The fifth habit is seek first to understand, then to be understood. This means listening actively and trying to understand others' perspectives before expressing your own. By seeking first to understand, you'll be able to communicate more effectively and build stronger relationships. When you first seek to understand, you actively listen to others and try to understand their perspectives, even if you disagree with them. This means paying attention to what others are saying and asking questions to clarify their point of view. It also means being open-minded and non-judgmental and making an effort to understand where others are coming from. One way to seek first to understand is to practice active listening. This means fully focusing on the person speaking, making eye contact, and giving verbal and nonverbal cues that show you are listening. It also means asking questions to clarify the person's point of view, and then paraphrasing what they said to make sure you understand. Another way to seek first to understand is to practice empathy. This means putting yourself in the other person's shoes and trying to understand how they feel and what they need. By doing this, you'll be able to build stronger relationships and resolve conflicts more effectively. Seeking first to understand is a critical habit for effective communication and building strong relationships. By taking the time to truly understand others, you'll be able to communicate more effectively, resolve conflicts more easily, and create deeper, more meaningful connections with others. The sixth habit is synergize. This means working together effectively as a team. By synergizing, you'll be able to achieve more than you could alone. When you synergize, you work with others to create a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. This means recognizing the strengths and weaknesses of each individual and using them to complement each other. It also means being open to different perspectives and valuing the diversity of ideas and backgrounds. One way to synergize is to practice teamwork. This means working with others to achieve a common goal and recognizing that the team is stronger than any one individual. By doing this, you'll be able to achieve more than you could alone. Another way to synergize is to practice open communication. 
This means being transparent, honest, and willing to share information and ideas with others. By doing this, you'll be able to build trust and create a more collaborative and productive environment. Synergizing is essential for achieving success in both personal and professional life. It's important for building strong teams, resolve conflicts, creating a positive work environment, and achieving common goals. The seventh habit is sharpening the saw. This means taking time to improve yourself, whether it's through exercise, learning, or other personal development activities. By sharpening the saw, you'll be able to maintain your effectiveness and continue to grow. When you sharpen the saw, you take care of yourself in four different areas, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. This means engaging in regular exercise, eating a healthy diet, and getting enough sleep. It also means engaging in activities that nurture your mind, such as reading, learning, and problem solving. It also means taking time to process and understand your emotions and practicing techniques to manage stress. Lastly, it means engaging in activities that nourish your spirit, such as meditation, prayer, or nature walks. One way to sharpen the saw is to make time for regular exercise and physical activity. This means setting aside time each day or week to engage in activities that will improve your physical health, such as running, swimming, or weightlifting. By doing this, you'll be able to maintain balance and effectiveness in your life. It's important for maintaining balance, physical and mental well-being, and personal growth. By sharpening the saw, you'll be able to achieve your goals and live a more fulfilling life. In conclusion, the seven habits of highly effective people, as outlined by Stephen Covey, provide a framework for achieving success and effectiveness in both personal and professional life. The habits, starting from the first habit of be proactive to the seventh habit of sharpen the saw, provide a holistic approach to personal and professional growth. By practicing these habits, individuals can improve their communication, build stronger relationships, resolve conflicts, achieve common goals, and maintain balance and effectiveness in their lives. It's important to keep in mind that these habits are not a one-time fix, but rather a lifelong commitment to personal and professional growth. It takes time, effort, and practice to incorporate these habits into your life. But by making a consistent effort to practice these habits, you'll be able to achieve success and live a more fulfilling life. In the end, it's important to remember that these habits are not a destination but a journey, so be patient and kind to yourself as you work to cultivate them. Thank you for watching our video on the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. I hope that you found it informative and helpful. If you want to continue learning and growing, be sure to subscribe to our channel Bookish Bliss for more videos on self-improvement and productivity. Thank you for your support and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Take care and we'll see you in our next video.